suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues of like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance look at somebody and say superhumans <laughs> let's go the Bible is a multi-dimensional book. The stories in the Bible are mostly about living in a 3D realm tethered to a four dimension. The stories in the Bible have been taken and used to create types of superheroes and powerful movie and comic book icons. Before there was a theory of relativity, men, uh, God's men defied the space-time continuum in the word of God. Eve spoke to a multi-dimensional being and ate of a powerful multiverse fruit that caused a spiritual reaction and changed them from human to human 2.0. All that happened in, in, in Genesis. They modified God's creation in the garden and awakened their understanding of good and evil. Their third eye, or the pineal gland, was activated, which caused them to seek after forbidden knowledge. This sounds like the stories of some X-Men. Stan Lee saw God as imperfect and used that belief to make heroes imperfect in his comics. I hope he repented. The spirit behind this caused people that were struggling with identity or hatred of a perfect God to gravitate to comics to find comfort in their pain. Those that were abandoned, neglected, ridiculed, or considered weird were able to live vicariously through his characters and even mimic their behaviors. This would usually cause them to desire to summon the powers and abilities of these characters. This would put them on a quest to tap into a 4D realm with their human spirit. This will get them in that realm, but it doesn't yield the results they were hoping for. When a person summons the 4D realm with, uh, for knowledge, powers, or abilities, they open themselves up, like I told you earlier, for spiritual entity to live in them and embed their will into their bodies. Remember, these spirits need a physical body to operate through in our realm to get the will of Satan accomplished on the earth. The devil does not have answers. He hates man, so he will never give you what you need, but rather what you want in order to destroy you. The Bible has all the answers. Instead of summoning the Bible characters that did great things, we can just be filled with the same power that enabled them and do even greater works. <laughs> Being able to fly, use mind control, or open portals of space and time is entertaining, but does very little compared to the person that believes God without needing to see superpowers. The only reason people want superpowers is to look good and prove themselves to others because they have a severe deficit. Well, guess what? God takes care of deficits. How many of you did the Lord take care of your deficit? You don't have to prove nothing to nobody. He will fix it so you will not desire these powers but would use them when necessary or when he deems you ready. Moses, Noah, David, Paul, and many others got superpowers without coveting them. They only trusted in God. In other words, when you no longer covet them, that's when God gives them to you. Uh, the oversaturation of action movies and books has caused people to crave entertainment from comic book heroes. The Bible has been dumbed down for the sake of seeker-friendly options and has dulled people's appetite to even read the Bible. But the Bible is where all of these things came from. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, DC, Marvel Comics, etc. All stole characters from the Bible and used them for entertainment. I feel like for many years people taught the Bible from a 3D perspective, even though it's a multi-dimensional book. The Bible is alive and should come to life in our minds when we read it. When we read the stories of the Old Testament acts of God's heroes, we should be engulfed in the action with them mentally. We should be propelled into the space and time of these stories and see them as supernatural superhero stories and not mere men walking around kicking up dust from their sandals all day. The devil wants to make the Bible boring and the entertainment industry exciting so he can control the narrative of our lives. But the Bible has all the cool stuff and bomb stories. There is no creator greater than God 
and no storytellers greater than the ones he elected to chronicle his word. Now go on a journey with me. Moses did it first. <laughs> he was able to command water long before the fictional Atlantean ever could. By the power of God. An entire sea opened up and a million people walked through it on dry land. Then he closed it just in time to drown their enemies. Samson, a judge in Israel, ripped the lion apart with his bare hands. Not to mention he beat up a whole army with just the jawbone of a donkey. The character of Samson, the strongest man to ever live, was stolen by Marvel and presented as Craven the Hunter. He even wears a lion on his body, symbolic of defeating a large beast. And don't forget, Samson put his hands together and pushed pillars of stone and knocked down an ancient building. <laughs> Elijah was fast way before the flash was created. He was able to outrun a chariot of the king by the power of God. Elijah had sent Ahab by chariot way on his way while staying behind. Ahab was far ahead of him on the journey and he still beat him on foot. Jack Kirby's Silver Surfer of Marvel defied the space-time continuum by surfing from galaxy to galaxy. But Enoch was a real-life galaxy explorer. The Bible tells us he walked out of the three-dimensional realm into another dimension. And I'm sure he received information from Adam about God and the 4D realm uh, that once was Eden. God did not wipe Adam's memory, so I'm sure he had a lot to teach Enoch about other realms. The book of Enoch tells of his findings during these journeys. Oh, I'm not done. The Bible says that when Stephen was about to be stoned, he looked into a portal and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. We cannot view this from a 3D perspective because it wouldn't make sense. There was an opening in our, our realm to another realm and Stephen saw the other realm plain but not simple. Also, it's not a coincidence that the man that opened the portals and connects with other realms in the MCU is named Stephen. The ugly Nightcrawler character of Marvel has a cool ability. He can defy space and time by teleportation. But Philip, an apostle of Jesus, defied space and time after he baptized the eunuch. The Bible said he vanished and appeared somewhere else. Somebody ought to put their hands together for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> David oh this is a good one right here David used colorful stones and tapped into the multiverse way before Thanos did it David inquired of God to know what was happening in an alternate reality he asked the Lord if a certain thing would happen God answered yes so David chose an alternate ending and the first thing he said in 1 Samuel 23 and 9, David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. So he said to Abathar the priest to do what? Bring hither the what? Bring me the stones. <laughs> Bring me the stones. They tried hard to make Superman a type of Christ the Savior. They even re referred to him as God in some comic accounts. Furthermore, they took God's name L and tagged him with it. But Superman pales in comparison to Christ. Look at somebody and say, Jesus is real. 
He ascended into another realm. Listen, right in front of his friends. He didn't wear a super suit, but he did transfigure himself into his kingly glorified body right in front of his disciples. Superman. Superman can't stand on a mountain and bring two servants, Moses and Elijah from the multiverse and have a conversation either. Jesus did all of this. We could combine all the powers of every fictional character ever created and still not equate them with Jesus. Jesus alone, uh oh, Jesus alone had the power to save mankind on earth and rule every galaxy and realm because he is God. He can be son, a spirit, and God at three and as one, which defies the laws of our physics and biology. He is not a law obeyer, but rather the supreme law giver. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Look at somebody say, above him there's no other. <laughs>